Some of the most remarkable people in this world don't appear on movie screens or in sports arenas. They work in offices, study in classrooms, and raise families at home. They're just ordinary people like you and I. Ordinary people who happen to have experienced something extraordinary and survived. <music> Off the Map is a travel television series I directed and shot over a 12-year period. Unlike most explorer stories, these modern travelers are women. Ordinary women who agreed to be filmed taking journeys to extraordinary places. For my Bolivia program, I was joined by my female host, Joan. We planned to travel from La Paz, Bolivia's capital, to islands in Lake Titicaca. My first impressions of La Paz was of the altitude, 13,000 feet. Being a seasoned traveler, I warned Joan about the symptoms. I believe my attempt to walk through a plate glass window was perhaps an early sign of altitude sickness. As we walked around the marketplace in La Paz, there was something different. I've been to markets before, but these people, they make you feel so welcome. We have here 300 varieties of potatoes. She's selling the sweet potatoes we normally eat, cooked with pork, oh. and in many dishes. It's a totally different world there, actually, and one has to be there to appreciate. Oh, drink more, drink more, and then now bring that too, and that's the, that's the thing. And then you eat the beach too. Yeah, that's it, that's yours. Mm. Yummy. Joan's first physical challenge was in the Valley de la Luna, not far from La Paz. With such a positive outlook, Joan proved to be an ideal candidate for this television program. We set off on the next leg of our journey by land. We left in the dead of night for our first stop, Corba, an old town located in the western part of the country. The mountains, the countryside, the animals, the people. I was part of that country. I wasn't a Canadian anymore. When we arrived in Corba, it was morning. I wasn't tired by the long drive. In fact, I couldn't wait to meet some of the local people. I certainly underestimated the outgoing nature of Joan's character. Exchange hats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, my head's so big. I love hats, and I love the hats that they wear. Now, I would actually have owned one of those hats, but they're very small, and they're very heavy on the head. And I think they enjoy my exchanging hats with them. And I think it was just expressing my thoughts to them, and so the hat was sort of something that I thought that they would get a little bit of a kick out of, which they did. Para que tus hijos, tus hijas, gocen. Today was a prelude to Bolivia's Independence Day celebrations. We were invited to take part in a ceremony. The religion is Catholic, interweaved with Incan beliefs. A large part of their belief system centers on gods associated with animals. The ceremony was part of the Independence Day celebrations. La bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo, el Espíritu Santo, nos des amén. Regina, Mater Misericordia, Ea Ergo, Advocata Nostra, Listo. Later in the day, we have the opportunity to join in on the village celebration. They hold the religious ceremony in the morning and have dancing in the afternoon. Dancing is one of my, one of my things. I love to dance. It makes me feel happy. I like dancing with the Latin men in Cover because 
It was full of life and I think we were just expressing our movements together and really enjoying our songs. And isn't that what life is all about? There's times when you have to stop directing, keep the camera rolling, hoping that you capture the spontaneity. That night in Korba, I attended a ritual in which the life of an animal was taken. As part of the celebrations, they take the life of a guinea pig as an offering to the gods. Word got around that there was a couple of foreigners in town. We were asked to attend a meeting at City Hall. Naturally suspicious of what these officials were concerned about, I decided to spend the night rewinding all the tapes that I had shot to give the impression that the tapes had not been used. Next morning we met with the officials. They seemed to be concerned with the fact that uh, I filmed the killing of an animal at that ceremony the night before. They insisted that I pay them $500 US and dedicate it to the Indigenous Fund. Although I recognize this as a scam, I didn't want to jeopardize the project, so I reluctantly paid. The next day, we drove west towards Cherry Zani. It was Independence Day all across Bolivia, and when we arrived at Cherry Zani, the Independence Day celebrations were already underway. The August the 6th marks the day that Bolivia gained its independence from the Spanish. August the 6th was actually the day of a big battle for the freedom, and now this day is celebrated throughout the country. I felt quite privileged to be able to celebrate this very special occasion with them. On my trip across Lake Titicaca, my guide took me to visit two brothers who built traditional reed boats, a form of workmanship that dates from pre-Columbian times. The reed boats are still made on a large scale. This is the totora, the dry flower. Yes, that's the flower that I yes, think I saw very on the road. And this is the paja brava. Oh yes. It looks like he's uh, breathing something there. Yeah. How that long would it take him to make one? Of them? 15 days. One person. One person. Oh, that's marvelous. Yes. See? Yes. That is really beautiful. It's strong. It's yes, strong. it's very, very, very beautiful. Okay, one, two, three, up. There she goes. Here again, these people are very happy. I think maybe we miss a lot in life when you visit a place like that and see how these people live. They take one day at a time, and they appreciate what they have. I think we could learn a lot from them. Often we assume that people in countries like Bolivia cannot possibly be happy uh, without the materialism that we enjoy in the West. But Joan suddenly realizes that uh, happiness can happen anywhere. On Lake Titicaca, once again, we traveled by hydrophone to Sun Island. I was anxious to visit the famous Fountain of Youth. So this is uh, Sun Island? Yes, this is the biggest island on Lake Titicaca. And it's also called Titicaca Island. Translated would be the stone of the Puma. Oh. And look at the waterfall, which is a natural Beautiful. spring that comes mm -hmm. from the ice of the mountains. It was considered as a sacred fountain during the Inca Empire. This is also called the Fountain of Youth. So let me drink some of the precious water. Oh, fountain, fountain, make me younger, make me younger. The stairway leads up to the top of the island. The Incans believe this was the birthplace of the sun. First place where you could see the sun after those 40 days and nights of rain was Sun Island. And they say that's why they called Sun Island. As I stood atop Sun Island, overlooking Lake Titicaca, my mind wandered to the Incas. I thought of the girls who lived in isolation on Moon Island. 
and how lucky I was to be seeing this very historical place. Now that I'm back in Canada, and I don't have any Bolivian men to dance with, I have to find partners at home. <laughs> 